Hi, my name is Jenna Abgar with Brand Out Blog, and I was supposed to be having another interview with Grover, a financial advisor, um, to discuss the complications of social media when you are working in highly regulated industries like um, the financial advisors and mortgage companies, and to some extent realtors, depending on what you're talking about. But since he didn't able, he wasn't able to make it. He had a flat tire. Um, I was going to go ahead and cover some of the differences between searchable social media and ones that are built for engagement. So obviously anytime you are dealing with a different social media platform, whether it is Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or StumbleUpon or any of the different options out there, you're going to have to have a different strategy. You know, it's not just the difference in the images and the sizes that you're using, but it's the very way that they work and when you understand the way they work and how they're different. Um, it's easier to understand what it is that you need to do um, to make each one of those special. And one of the big differences with that is, is if it is searchable or if it's more for engagement. So technically speaking, I think Facebook, let's start with Facebook, is supposed to be searchable. But after running a promotion recently, um, we realized really quickly that those hashtags mean nothing um, or very little, especially on your personal page, even if you make them public. So running a promotion on Facebook is very difficult because it is not searchable. It is still based on an engagement idea where you know people are on their feed and they're scrolling and they're scrolling and they're going from there and searching different things um, based on what they see in their feed. But if you actually go into the search bar, other than finding a page or a friend, your search options are very limited. They might show you pages, um, but as a small business, the hashtag especially worthless. You're not going on and searching. The other thing is nobody is really searching on Facebook. They're not going there. Like think about when you go to YouTube, you might search, you know, how to find a particular recipe. Facebook's not like this. You go there to hang out, to engage, talk to friends. And so when you are making your Facebook post for your business page, or even if it's a kind of business-based post where um, it's on your personal page and you need to remember that this is about engagement and adding value and that people will not be searching for this post. This is something they're just gonna stumble upon. So the next one is probably Twitter and Twitter's a weird one. It can be both. So Twitter is very searchable. It can be found in Google. It can be searched in the top bar. That's how people will use it, especially if they're at an event. So it's very like a, a real time social searchable media. If you're at an event, you might follow a certain hashtag or be part of a conversation. You might look for certain brands or complaints on Twitter. So when you're writing your Twitter post, it's important to keep in mind how people are using it and how people are searching for it. Uh, make sure you have the right hashtags to join the conversation. The other one, like I already mentioned, YouTube. YouTube, um, people might, you know, surf YouTube, so it's important to make, um, especially if you have subscribers, to remember that people are just engaging and they might expect something every day at 8 a.m. or once a week and something new from you, but Google is a highly searchable medium, so people who don't normally surf YouTube, um, it shows up in Google results so that you can always count on YouTube to find what you need to learn how to do. Um, my car is still in the shop. But when it did break down and we were outside Chillicothe, Texas, and I needed to know what was going on with my car, I was able to hop on YouTube and search, you know, how to add coolant and antifreeze to a 2013 Dodge Durango. And a video pops up, several videos pop up, and I was able to give my engine a pretty good rundown and check just based off these YouTube videos. So. When you are adding the keywords and you're writing the description for your YouTube video and the title for your YouTube video, keep this in mind. And there are lots of strategies built up for YouTube that we've used with our own clients. So consider that, you know, make sure, you know, like I said, I was looking for my example. I was looking for this, something very specific. So if I was posting that video that I was using to fix my car, I want to make sure there were Dodges in there. Yeah, 2013 or any year that has that same system. Um, Durango, if there's any other words, like some cars, um, the upper model has a different name than the lower model does. And um, SUV, coolant, anti antifreeze, um, engine check, um, any of these words that somebody might use to find you. And there's lots of great tools out there to help you figure out 
what words you might be looking for, what words people might be searching um, for that type of thing that you can use. I think I use one called Fresh Key that helps a lot and you can just do a Google search. You can pay someone off of Fiverr to do the research for you, five bucks, and they'll come up with a hundred words for you. I have a great vendor. Um, but there's lots of different ways, but you have to remember that it is predominantly a search social media, and so you have to treat the terms that way. Google Plus. So I love and hate Google Plus. I don't spend much time with it. I spend about 10 minutes setting up the platform for me or my clients to make sure that it's matched across all the other platforms. Um, Google Plus is, in theory, both searchable and engagement, the idea that it would be replacing Facebook and that kind of flop. <clears throat> I've heard lots of people use it in India, but for the most part, people just toss things out there. It is searchable. You can go up there and you can certainly find every single post on, um, that you post out there through a standard Google search. So it is a great thing to go ahead and schedule if you already are. So if you're using Hootsuite and Buffer, go ahead and toss that Facebook post, that LinkedIn post all the way over to Google Plus as well. Um, and remember that it's searchable. So when you're sending that post out, think that what words are people going to be finding. So I will actually send a lot of my Twitter posts there because my Twitter posts are directly to the point, have those search terms that I'm already looking to use and the hashtags which work on Google+. Plus. Um, another one is LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I don't think you can search your post at all. Like somebody might, um, yeah, not, not searching at all. So. Just keep in mind that that's an engagement based one and you're going to be counting on people to like it and comment on it for it to stay up in um, the algorithm and stay on top. But other than that, it is pure engagement and people are just going to be scrolling and see it. So it's all about the imagery and less about the word choice that you use in each individual post. So which one am I missing? Pinterest. So Pinterest is another big one. It is um, a searchable term uh, or more searchable social platform. People do, they might scroll their personal Pinterest feed where they have friends that they follow, but predominantly people are going to Pinterest to find a very particular topic or thing or need. So it's more of a searchable platform. So if you are pinning something from your website, if you're pinning quotes, if you're pinning anything, remember it's about the search term. So just like Twitter, just like YouTube, focus on getting the right search terms in there, whether it's motivational coach, um, a big one that I'm constantly using is color palettes um, to help find great color palettes for my clients' branding um, as starting points. So if you don't, if you're making those color palettes, if you don't have the word color, if you don't have the word palette, if you don't have some kind of feeling term or a descriptive term to that color palette, I might not ever find it. So one client I was looking for patriotic. So if it was red, white, and blue, I wanted to see those. Um, you might be looking for yellow base. So if I have, let's say, the patriotic kind of a, a flag-based color palette, I want the word color, palette, red, white, blue, white, um, patriotic, um, American, French, because remember it's French too, um, is many search terms that you can load up in there that seem reasonable. Um, make sure you have those search terms there and available. Um, so I think I've covered most of the social medias that I use. I guess there's Tumblr. Tumblr is both. It's searchable and it is um, something that people feed through. I don't find that it's a social media platform that a lot of people use. They might use it more like a web page where it's a little bit more inexpensive to run a, like a microblogging site. Um, but it is both searchable. Again, Tumblr I don't focus on, but if I'm sending something through Instagram, I'll go ahead and send it to Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Flickr and that's about the extent of it. So if you have any questions about searchable and engagement based social media platforms and some of the difference between each one of them, I'll try to plop this into a blog post real quick and um, so that you can cover it and you can read it and see it more clearly. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below and me or one of my team members will get to it. And um, if you have any questions for future broadcasts um, for Morning um, Tea with Jenna, just let me know in the comments below too. And don't forget to subscribe to see them every morning. So bye and have a great day. Bye.